since I did show you a few different ways to multiply, I'm going to try to use, I think there's enough that I can do one of each method on our test taking skills. Remember, on the test, it does not matter to me what method you want to use to multiply, whether you want to use the traditional method, the one we showed yesterday, the one that I told you, mom and dad are probably the ones that, that's probably the one that they know. If you want to use the area model, the one we did before that, or I, even the sketching, but honestly, I would not use the sketching. I think it takes too much space and too much time compared to the other one. So if I were you, I would choose either the area model or I would use the traditional, like the one that mom or dad might be familiar with. Yes, Ezekiel. What does it look like uh, on the front? Oh, what are you looking for? It's the same multiplication packet that we've been working out of. Number one says Hayes Soil Company shipped 75 bags of mulch to a gardening store. Each bag of mulch weighed 36 pounds. How many pounds of mulch are in the 75 bags? Since this is a word problem, I'm going to treat it like one. I'm going to circle my question mark. I'm going to go backwards from the question mark and find the question word. How many pounds of mulch are in the 75 bags? So we're looking for pounds of mulch. <clears throat> they also mention bags in my question, 75 bags. Hayes Soil Company shipped 75 bags. Same thing they tell me in the question of mulch to a gardening store. Each bag, we've talked about words like that before, whenever they use words like each, like every, like per, like equal amount, like even amount in a word problem. What operations are they telling you to think of? Noah? Multiplication and division. Multiplication and division. Now, Noah, if we've been practicing with multiplication this week and last week, if this set, if the front of our packet says multiplication, which operation do you think we're going to be using? Multiplication. Multiplication, because it's a multiplication test, right? Now, if this were a test over everything we had learned, then I could go, well, maybe it's division, but for the test we're going to take, Multiplication is going to be what they want you to do. Each bag of mulch weighed 36 pounds. So I've got my two numbers here, 75 and 36. Like I said, I'm going to, I have enough problems here to do one example of each method. That way, no matter which method we want to use, we'd have at least one example here on our paper with us. So I'm going to use the traditional, the one that mom or dad is probably more familiar with. We have 75 times 36. So whenever I use the traditional method, I never want my numbers written side to side like this. I always want them stacked up and down. When you do multiplication, does it matter which number is on top and which number is on bottom? Does it matter which number comes first in multiplication? Bailey, I see you shaking your head. Absolutely right. In multiplication, it doesn't matter if I do 75 times 36 or 36 times 75. I'll get the same answer either way. So for the traditional method, remember we start off with the bottom number in the ones place. I'm going to start by multiplying 
my two numbers in the ones place. Six times five. Who can tell me what is six times five? Bailey, what would I get? A uh, 30. 30. Okay. Now I can't write 30 down here, but I can put a zero and carry over a three. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to take that same six, that one's place on the bottom, and I'm going to multiply it times a number in my tens place now. So instead of six times five, I have six times seven. Who can tell me what is six times seven? Kylie? 42. 42. Now I do have three that I carried over. So Kylie, if I had 42 and then I added three more, what would I have? 45. 45. Kylie, is this my answer here? 450? No. No. Remember, when you're using that traditional method, that older style of multiplication, just because you multiplied the ones place, that doesn't mean that you're done. Because you can't forget there's a second number, a number in the tens place. So I can't just multiply with this six and then go, oh, that's it, I'm done. I need to multiply with the three too. Also remember, when you start multiplying, with that three, the three is in the tens place, not in the ones place anymore. So no matter what I multiply, it's going to start in the tens place. To make sure my numbers do start in the tens place, I'm going to go underneath my first number, and I'm going to put a zero in the ones place. That way I can kind of push everything over. I'm going to take that number in my tens place, and I'm going to multiply it with the top number in my ones place. Three times five. Who can tell me what is three times five? Chase, it's three times five. Fifteen. Okay, I can't write all of fifteen down here, but I can put a five, and I can carry over a one. Now I'm going to multiply the two numbers in my tens place. So the three and the seven. Three times seven. What is three times seven? Bradley? Three times seven is 21. Okay, and then I carried over an extra one. So Bradley, what's 21 plus an extra one? 22. 22. I'm going to write 22. Now, I don't have two different answers. I just have two parts. I'm going to add those two parts together to get my final answer, my product. So let's add them. 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 plus 5. Who can tell me what is 5 plus 5? Kylie? 10. Ten. Okay, I'm going to put a 0, and I'm going to carry over a 1. What is 4 plus 2? Christopher? What is four plus two, Christopher? Six. Six plus the extra one? Seven. Seven. And then two plus nothing would be what? What would it be, Christopher? Two plus nothing. Two. Two. So my answer, my product, is 2,700. 
if I look at my answer choices, I have one answer choice that would be correct. Answer choice C, 2,700 pounds. So remember with the traditional method, you have to multiply first using the number in the ones place. You multiply it two times. Then you multiply with the number in the tens place. And again, you multiply two times. Again, if this is the method that makes sense to you, it, it just works for you, you do better with it, use it. If this method is like confusing for you, if it doesn't make sense, or if like right now when we were doing it, if you forgot any of those steps, probably use a different method. Because like I told you, it doesn't matter to me how you solve it, whether you use this one, whether you use the aerial model, like question two has, really truly does not matter to me. What matters to me is you use the one that works for you, whichever one makes more sense to you, and whichever one you do better with. So don't choose the one that's harder for you. Don't make the test harder than it, than it already is. They're already trying to trick you. So just use the one that works best for you. If I look at question two, I can see that they've already set up an area model box for me. I'm going to use area model to solve the second problem. Mr. Velasco ordered 15 large cheese pizzas, 14 veggie pizzas, and 38 drinks for a faculty party. If each pizza cost $13, what was the total cost of the pizzas? Show how you solved for the product in two different ways. First, use the multiplication model to show you how you found the product then show a different way. Okay, a question like this that says, show how you solved for the product in two different ways? No. No, you don't have to. Solve it one way, and that's it. You do not have to do any extra work. So I'm going to find my question mark. I'm going to go backwards from the question mark and find the question word. What? What was the total cost of the pizzas? So I want to look for money and pizza. It's like real life. All you want is money and pizza. Mr. Velasco ordered 15 large cheese pizzas. Okay, pizza. 14 veggie pizzas, also pizza, and 38 drinks. Drinks are not pizza, drinks are not money. <clears throat> For a faculty party, if each, there's that word again, and normally on any other math test or math problem, each would tell us to start thinking of what two operations. What are those two operations that I should start thinking of when I see words like each and every and per and equal amount and same amount or same number or anything like that? Jadine? Times, times and divide. Okay, but if this is a multiplication test, Jadine, which one do you think I should use? Multiplication. Multiplication. Like I said, if this were like a regular test, or if this was a test over everything that we've done, then I might have, then I would have to read and be careful and decide if it's multiplying or dividing. Since this is a multiplication test, it is multiplication. So if each pizza cost $13, that's money. I need to know about it. Now they try to do something tricky here. They give us three numbers. 15 cheese pizzas, 14 veggie pizzas, $13. The reason why they give us three numbers to look at and even an extra number in case we're not being super careful is because they want us to not really know what to do. They want us to go, well, I can't multiply three numbers, so what do I have to do? 
But look at two of our numbers. 15 large cheese pizzas, 14 veggie pizzas, pizzas, pizzas. They don't say that one pizza is more expensive and one pizza is less expensive. They cost the same amount of money. So if those pizzas cost the same amount of money, they're the same thing. They're just pizzas. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two different numbers for pizzas and I'm going to add them together. So I get all the pizzas together. So I'm going to take 15 and 14 and add them together. Because even though one is cheese and one is veggie, they are both pizzas. So I'm going to combine them. 5 plus 4 is what? What would I get if I had 5 and I added 4? Violet, what would I get? 9. 9. And Violet, what would I get if I had 1 plus 1? 2. Two. So, Mr. Velasco ordered 29 pizzas. Each pizza cost $13. So now I know the numbers to use. 29 times 13. If the traditional method makes more sense to you, you do not have to use this. But, like I said, I want to do one example of the area model, just in case people want to use that one for their test. So if I want to use the area model, they already drew the box for me, which is really nice of them. If not, I would draw it myself. It's not too hard. No, JD. I'm going to take the number 29, and I'm going to break it into two pieces. I have two boxes. The first piece of 29 would be 20, because there's just two in the tens place. Two tens would be 20, plus nine, because there's a nine in the ones place. Then I would break up the number 13. I would have 10, because there's a one in the tens place, and one ten is 10, plus three, because there's a three in the ones place, and three ones is three. <laughs> Now that I've got my numbers in the correct place, I can start doing my, my, not addition yet. I don't have my numbers yet. I can start doing my multiplication. Remember, each box is a different multiplication problem. And the way you know which numbers you're multiplying is you look at what number do I have on top of that box and what number is on the side of that box. No, Alexa, this is in... Our multiplication packet. So, this first box, the biggest one, always the one I start with. There's a 20 on the top, and there is a 10 on the side. So this box would be the same as doing 20 times 10. If I multiply 20 times 10, first, what could I do to make that multiplication problem simpler? Because if I see 20 times 10, I might think that's a little bit difficult, but I can do something to make it easier. Jadeen? By taking away the zeros. Okay, how many zeros could I take away? Two. Okay, one from the 20, one from the 10. Now I've got two times one. Two times one, Jadeen. Two. So is my answer just two? No, you have to add back the zeros. We'll have to add them back. We got 200. Okay, my answer is not just 200. I also have to do the other multiplication problems. So let's go to the next box. This box 
has a 9 on the top and a 10 on the side. So this is 9 times 10. Who can tell me what is 9 times 10? Bradley? 90. 90. My answer is not 90 either. That's just one part. Now I'm going to do the bottom boxes. This box has a 20 up at the top and a 3 on the side. So 20 times 3. 20 times 3 might seem a little bit difficult, but what can I do that would make the multiplication problem 20 times 3 a lot easier for myself to solve? Jaylene? What could I do that would make this easier, Jaylene? I could take away the zero. There's only one zero I can take away, but when I do that, I have two times three. What's two times three, Jaylene? But what I get if I multiply two times three? So we get a six, and then we have to add that zero back. So we get 60. I've got one last box. There's a nine at the top. There's a three on the side, so it's nine times. Who can tell me what is nine times? Nine times, Christopher, what's nine times three? Nine is on the top. What number's on the side, Christopher? Is there another nine on the side, or what number is this? Three, so nine times three. What's nine times three? Twenty-seven. The last step, solving multiplication using the area method, is to add up all the parts. 200 plus 90. 0 plus 0 is 0. What is 0 plus 9? Kylie, 0 plus 9? 9. And then 2 plus nothing is 2. Now I need to add the 60. 0 plus 0 is still 0. What's 9 plus 6? 9 plus 6. Noah? 15. So I'm going to put a 5 down here and carry over a 1. What's 2 plus 1? Kylie? 3. 3. Okay. I don't have a lot of room down at the bottom, so I'm just going to move my number over. 150 plus the last part, 27. 
Zero plus seven. What is zero plus seven? Jaylene? Seven. Five plus two. What is five plus two? Bailey? You said Bailey, right? Yep, Bailey with the B. Um, it's it's uh five plus two yep. is seven. Seven. And then three plus nothing would be three. Three hundred seventy-seven. If I look at my answer choices, I've got one that matches perfectly. On the other side, problem number three shows us a sketching method. We don't have to solve the problem. What we have to do is figure out which one shows us the correct problem. It says which model represents 12 times 14. So I need to look at all of these models and see which one actually shows me 12 times 15. Yes, Jaylene. Okay, hang on. Let me talk about the answer choices first, and then I'll come back to you, okay? For these problems, what we need to do is we need to pay very close attention to the labels they put on the sides here. Those labels are going to be very important. Okay? So let's look at answer choice A. If I look along the top of this sketch, I see 10 and I see 2. If I add those numbers together, 10 plus 2, I get 12. If I look along the side, I see the number 10, I see the number 2. If I add those numbers together, I get 12. So this one shows me 12 times 12. Something important I want you to notice. Answer choice B looks a lot like all the models or all the rest of the models on this page and it looks a lot like the models we were seeing yesterday but there's one thing they made a mistake on if they are showing you a sketch that is done correctly you should not have any pieces sticking out a sketch that is done correctly everything will line up into like a rectangle or a square shape. If you see something like answer choice B and it's got pieces sticking out, whether it's on the bottom corners, whether it's on the top corners, does not matter. If you see pieces sticking out, if they don't make a perfect square or rectangle shape, it is wrong. They did not do that sketch correctly. So I'm not even gonna bother looking at what the labels are because they didn't do this one correctly. Now C and D, they did do correctly, so I am going to look at the, the labels there. On answer choice C, I see the labels 10 and 2. If I add those together, I get 12. Now on the side, there's only one label, so I don't have to add anything. It's just 4. 4 times 12. And the last model... I look along the top, it has a 10 and a 4. So if I add those together, I get 14. If I look along the side, it's got a 10 and a 2. 10 plus 2 equals 12. So this is 12 times 14. So Jaylene, which answer choice would you pick? Would you pick A, C, or D?
answer choice D. It has both of the numbers that I need. Got 12 and it's got 14. For a problem like this, it does not matter which number's on the top, it does not matter which number's on the side. Because remember, with multiplication, it does not matter which number goes first. It could be the it could be 14, it could be the 12. Doesn't matter. So even if they turn this model around sideways, it's still an okay model. Answer choice D 